Now this video is going to be about a burner that was advertised as being called the American. It was a double burner with two wicks. Each wick was individually controlled and the top really looks like a plume in that one. And I always thought, because it, was a, it wasn't a domed like the, uh, most of the British doubles, and P&A, they were noted for having a, a rounded and not a domed uh, air dome. But one of the things that I discovered was, according to Miles Stair, the Plume and Atwood doubles, they used a wick that was 0 0.085 uh, thick, where these are 0 0.092 thick. So they're thicker. So you can't use the 92 in a Plume and Atwood, and if you, you use the 085s in these, you cannot get the amount of light that you should get because this particular light is the most powerful flat wick lamp that I believe was ever made. Now they came in several styles. This is a style without the snuffer. This style right here has the snuffer. Take a look you would turn the wicks down to about there so you had very little flame and you hit this lever. So see what happens. It snuffs it out. Now I think that uh, whoever made the American, they never made any other lamps that were smaller. There was just the dual inch and a half. So it's very possible that Plume and Atwood did make it, but they made it special for somebody. So these are uh, the original wicks. Here's another pair of original wicks. And this is the uh, 092 stuff from Miles Stair that comes from Hattersley. Now currently they're not listing it because they can't get it. So if you happen to have one of these Americans, you're pretty much going to be stuck in wicks until such time as Miles can get more. Now this particular one, it's a, another standard uh, unit without the snuffers. But the funny thing is, look at the difference in in wicks. It looks like back in the day they only ran this on one light, maybe to save kerosene. I will say that these things definitely use a lot of kerosene because you got two inch and a half wicks and the thing is a single wick an inch and a half in a number three is 15 watts of light. So Two, 15 and 15 is 30, but they don't because the, uh, I'll show an inset, how the, the uh, lights or the, the burns kind of turn into each other and they feed off each other so you can raise it higher. And because of that, you're getting 45 going on 50 watts of light. So, how you would determine you have a, an American? I, you've, you've seen the original um, ad from, I think it was uh, either Sears or Montgomery Ward sold them. But, you look on the adjusters, and here's an inset showing all the patent dates. 
that shows you that you definitely have an American. I'm going to show you some insets here showing all the individual parts. You've got the the bottom unit with the uh, with just the towers. Then you can pull off the various pieces, and you're down to just the adjusters and the and the towers. It's a fairly simple uh, assembly, but it's just very very effective. Now, why are these so hard to find, and they're very expensive when you do find them? Apparently, they just didn't sell very well because you hardly ever find them on the market the way you do any of the uh, uh, Queen Anne's or Plume and Atwood Eagles. And part of it is you absolutely had to have these wicks. And on the chimney, you had to have a... Uh, a taller chimney to get the burn right. Now what I've found is if you want to get the most light, I mean they'll work pretty well on kerosene, but you got to use an eight and a half inch chimney which would be about there. But if you want even more light than they were designed for, you get a 10 inch chimney and from Miles Stair, you make sure that it's borosilicate, which is Pyrex, and you use clean heat. That gives you the absolute most light. And because of that, I think that they weren't terribly popular because they might they people probably they were using the thin antique glass and let me show you on this. If you can notice how thick that glass is. That's far thicker than standard. That's a modern one. Back then, with the amount of heat that those things generated, I'm afraid that they probably shattered the glass if you didn't heat them up slowly, or if there was cold air coming in from a door or something, they would shatter. And I think people just didn't like the idea of it. Plus, looking at this, they may have decided that they're only going to burn one side because they use so much fuel. But if you're interested in the maximum amount of light, like I am, this is the setup you got to have. you got to have the special, either the original Wix or the Miles Stair. 10 inch chimney, clean heat, then you will get a great light. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you. And you notice that I keep picking it off like that. You got your two adjusters, you got two cutouts right there. So you're not really taking the chimney on and off, you're taking that uh, air dome. So you bring the wicks up just a touch. And get them going. And then you put the chimney on. And now you're going to leave it. You don't want to be in a, a hurry. You want those you want those burners to warm up the chimney before you go crazy with the the wick. I'm going to kill some lights and we'll just let that warm up. Okay, we've got them going, and I think we're going to be okay to bring it up a little bit more. Right now we have exceeded what any of the flat wick lamps can do, and we've still got a ways to go.
If you notice, you can kind of see that they're bending in towards each other. Now I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see just how high that is. And that is a tremendous amount of light, and that is why I love these Americans. They're hard to find. You generally have to pay a lot to get them. You have to have either the original Wix or these unobtainium Hattersley 090s and the clean heat, and they really pump out the light. Can you do it on kerosene? Sure you can. Get an 8.5 inch chimney you won't be able to get as much light because at that um, wick height at that wick height right there if it would uh, focus doesn't seem to wanna but anyway at that wick height you definitely will have smoke especially since I seem to have a little bit on that side on the other wick. So but if you need light and you want to stick with the uh, flat wicks as opposed to a center draft or a gas mantle or an Aladdin, these are definitely worth your time. I just like them because they're, being a flat wick lamp, they're not fussy. So that's what I think of the American. I wish I could buy them. They went for 125 years ago. So last thing I'm going to show you is how to turn these Americans off. Bring them down like that. And then you reach over and you hit the lever. There you go. So that's my uh, collection of the American double wick lamps. Just as I was finishing up this video, I got an email from somebody that showed me this Valley Star dual lamp heater. It's from the Wheeling Stove and Range Company, Wheeling, West Virginia. And if you zoom in on those burners, those are the double Americans. So apparently this company used them for that. Maybe the the burners themselves were never out on the market for lamps. They were only for these heaters. I don't know, but it's interesting.